Welcome. Stay tuned for suspense. Tonight, we take pleasure in bringing you Suspense, a weekly anthology of notable melodramas from stage and screen, fiction and radio, presented each week to bring you to the edge of your chair, to keep you in Suspense. What do you want? I'm here to interrogate the prisoner. You? Yes. But... You must be Dubois. Yes, Colonel. We've been expecting you. Come in. Thank you, sir. I'm Colonel Graves, Commander, Dolce Base. This is Dr. Hauser. Hello. Doctor. And you've already met Captain Graham, our Chief of Security. Yeah. Is that the subject? It is. You seem surprised. I am. It looks almost human. Does that put you more at ease? And it speaks English? It does. It does. Hmm. I I assumed there was some means of communication already established, or else you wouldn't have called for me, but this... It has full comprehension. It has full comprehension, yes. It is also of the male gender, so please feel free to refer to it as he, if that is better suited to your purposes. It doesn't matter one way or another to me, but suit yourself. Does he have a name? Not that he's given us as of yet. Dr. Hauser is taken to referring to him as X. As an extraterrestrial? Yes, sir. Is there a reason why you don't want to tell us your name? No reason other than simple expediency. My name would be all but unpronounceable to a human tongue, so it would be a waste of time to even try. I do hope this does not cause any trouble for you. Brother, I'm not the one who's got trouble. Brother... I find it unlikely that we are biologically related in any significant sense. It's just a figure of speech. Ah. Then the use of brother is in the vernacular. Yes. Uh, Colonel, have you done any preliminary work? Only a bit. Dr. Hauser? I did a very basic physical examination. What did you find out? It seems to have systems roughly equivalent to our own. Circulatory, respiratory... Nervous. Nervous. Meaning X should feel pain just the same way we do. Yes, I I caught that. In case it becomes necessary to... Yes, I caught that. And it may come to that. Subject is highly resistant to both sodium amytal and sodium thiopental. So, suggestibility techniques are out. I have some medical instruments prepared, just in case they are... Needed. Dr. Hauser. Thank you. Hopefully that won't be necessary. Captain Graham, is X securely restrained? Is X securely restrained? Yes. 
In that case, Colonel, with your permission, I'd like to dismiss Captain Graham and his men. What? What will be happening here is both top secret and highly sensitive. The fewer people involved, the better. Now you listen here. I don't take orders from no- You will, Captain. This is Major Elton Dubois, Army Intelligence. Major? Yes, Major, Captain. So you can either leave, or else I'll have you up on charges. Come on, men. And Captain? What? What? Sir. I'll hear you say it, Captain. What, sir? Any and all information regarding X is top secret. If any of you have trouble keeping your traps shut, you'll be up before a court martial. Yes, sir. Let's get started. Major Dubois, I am confused in regards to your interaction with Captain Graham. You are of a higher status than Captain Graham, are you not? Rank. A higher rank than Captain Graham, and yet he treated you in a most disrespectful manner. Yeah, that happens sometimes. It was apparent that the two of you had not met before, so it could not have been the result of previous interaction. Mm-hmm. X, where do you come from? And your attire is nondescript, so... Captain Graham could not have made judgments about your social status based on that. I said, where do you come from? In fact, the only difference I can discern between the two of you is the higher concentration of melanin in your skin. X, where do you come from? But that is illogical. Bias based on a simple genetic adaptation. X! My apologies, Major. You asked me where I came from? Yes. Colonel, where was it that the police officers found me? The intersection of Thunderbird Drive and Sand Hill Drive, Dulce, New Mexico. Yes? Uh, yes. No. I mean, where is it that you originated from? Ah. Uh, out there, of course. The name, like my own, would be meaningless to you. I would point out its general placement in the night sky, but this room has no windows. I can show you, if you will take me outside. <laughs> <clears throat> like that's ever going to happen. Maybe later. How far away is your home world? Far away. Can you be more specific? In space, everything is far away. Yes, it is. How far away is your home world? Do you at present have a means of visiting it? No. Then the answer would be largely meaningless to you. But it also couldn't do any harm to answer, correct? I fail to see the reasoning behind providing such an answer. Call it a gesture of goodwill. I know that the human race is aware of the concept of irony. You consider asking for a gesture of goodwill to be ironic? Given my current circumstances, yes. Meaning? Imprisoned against my wishes. We just need to ask you some questions. The more you cooperate, the faster it'll go. Does your judiciary not operate under the system of due process? That applies to American citizens only, not aliens. So you would treat other humans as you were treating me? Anyone who's a threat to our way of life. Curious. Once I have answered your questions, will I be permitted to leave? Uh, that depends on your answers. Yes, I understand. Back to the subject at hand. Why did you choose the town of Dolce as your point of arrival on Earth? Is there some special significance to this place? Your point of arrival just happened to be less than five miles from this very base. That would seem to be a rather unlikely coincidence. Perhaps this is simply where I was meant to be. Meaning? Your physicist, Albert Einstein, once said coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. 
I don't believe in coincidence. Neither does Professor Einstein, apparently. But Professor Einstein isn't the one who showed up at our front door unexpected. Not yet, at any rate. You seem to think this is all some kind of joke. Do I? Yes! All these flippant, evasive answers. And besides, Professor Einstein passed on earlier this year. Passed on? Passed on what? He died. Ceased to exist? None of us truly cease to exist. We simply become something else. Sorry, I'm not much of a spiritualist. I was not speaking in terms of spirituality. Antoine Lavoisier introduced humanity to the law of conservation of mass nearly 200 years ago. Listen, X. You're not here to argue spirituality or science with us. Then why am I here? That's what you're here to answer. Colonel Graves just told me that I was not here to argue spirituality. What? The question of why am I here is at the very core of most spiritual beliefs, is it not? <laughs> we want to know why you chose the town of Dulce, New Mexico as your point of arrival on Earth. I thought we had discussed that already. We did. And you avoided giving a direct answer. Did I not give a direct answer? You said... Perhaps this is simply where I was meant to be. Is that not a direct answer? No, it is not. Then what would be a direct answer, in your estimation? The truth would be a good starting point. And what is the truth, Colonel Graves? That you came here to spy on this top-secret installation and learn all our military secrets. If you are already convinced that is the truth, then why do I need to answer at all? Because we need to be sure. So if I assured you that my purpose here is not to gather information on your military, would that convince you? No! Why would it not convince you? Because you could be hiding something. Do you not have a mechanical means of determining truth from fiction? Any chance of a polygraph test being effective, Dr. Hauser? None. Its bodily functions are sufficiently different from our own to make calibration of the polygraph problematic at best. And given that it was completely unaffected by our truth drugs... No, in my opinion, it would be a complete waste of time. Other methods of extracting information should still be effective, however. Other methods of extracting information? Methods that rely on physical coercion. Physical coercion? Ah, you mean torture. We prefer to call it the third degree. The third degree? What are the first and second degrees? You're getting those right now. I see. Torture... The third degree... The third degree. It seems to be an inefficient means of determining guilt or innocence. It has worked well enough in the past. I do not understand how. Enhanced levels of physical discomfort are bound to produce flawed results. A guilty subject will say anything to bring an end to the proceedings, regardless of whether or not it is the truth, while the only recourse for an innocent is to confess to an offense he or she did not commit. Look, if you want to avoid finding out about the third degree firsthand... Then you'll start cooperating with us. Have I been uncooperative, Colonel? Have I offered any resistance? You've avoided answering any of our questions. I have answered your questions. You simply do not approve of the answers. You've given us no information. Perhaps I have no information to give. Oh. <laughs> You're going to have to do a lot better than that if you expect to get out of this. Alive, you mean? I ask you again, Colonel. If I give you answers more fitting to your wishes... Will you release me? We'll see. So your intent is to imprison me for the rest of my existence, regardless of what I say? Why would that concern you? You said yourself that none of us truly cease to exist. It does not concern me. I am merely pondering the utter lack of morality in such an action. What would an alien know about morality? Listen, I don't have to explain my actions to you. I'll do whatever I have to do in order to keep my country safe. Safe from what? From you! From you and your... kind! But I have done nothing to indicate that I am any sort of threat. You're here, aren't you? It would seem that way. That's enough for me. Will your conscience allow you to inflict pain on an innocent? Mister, my conscience answers to the people of the United States, and no one else. I see. Colonel, I think the best thing to do is continue this in the morning. And give our visitor some time to consider what he has learned here. Thank you, Major. I will. 
All right. You're the expert, after all. But if our visitor isn't more cooperative come morning, we'll need to resort to more extreme measures. I think I've learned enough about its anatomy to suggest the most effective techniques. Thank you, Doctor. I'll keep that in mind. Captain Graham, I want two guards inside this room and two others outside at all times. Understood? Yes, sir. A colonel, respectfully, in an interrogation such as this, keeping the subject in complete isolation when not undergoing questioning is very important. I would suggest dispensing with the interior guards. Are you certain? Yes, sir. It's a proven technique. But how do we know he won't try to harm himself? Harm myself? Why should I wish to do that? To deny us all that valuable information you have in your head. If I do indeed have valuable information in my head, I am already doing a good job of denying it to you. <laughs> we'll find out in the morning. We'll find out everything. Yes, I do believe we will. Captain Graham, just post two guards outside the door. But keep the prisoner in restraints. Understood? Understood, sir. Good morning, Major Dubois. Good morning, sir. Sergeant, has Dr. Hauser arrived yet? No, sir. No one has gone in or out of the room since you left at 2315 last night. Very good. Do you want to wait for Hauser or get started now? No, let's get started now. I was playing a hunch last night, and I want to see if it panned out. All right. Sergeant, open the door. What the devil? X is gone, isn't he? That's not possible. This door's the only way in or out, and it hasn't been opened since last night. Even if he managed to get free of his restraints, there's no escape. Yet X is gone, nonetheless. Was this your hunch? That X had some means of getting out? Yes. Then why didn't you say something? Because you wouldn't have believed that any more than you believed your own eyes when you first looked into that room. All I had was the merest hint of a gut feeling. How did he do it? I don't know how, but I do know why. <laughs> it doesn't take a military intelligence officer to know the why. X didn't want to be imprisoned. Who would? But that's not the reason. Then why don't you tell me what it is, Major? X left because the interrogation was over. Over? We'd barely begun! No, it was over. He learned all he needed to learn. What? Colonel Graves, we thought we were interrogating him, but really, he was interrogating us. <laughs> That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Is it, Colonel? Think about where X chose to first appear. He didn't just turn up within a few miles of a military installation. He turned up within a few miles of the very installation he'd have been taken to anyway. And the way he avoided giving us any information while using his own seemingly innocent questions to learn about us. Even when we didn't answer. Colonel, I've been on both ends of a grilling, and last night we were being grilled. Very subtly, but grilled nonetheless. But grilled for what? We didn't divulge any military secrets. At least nothing X didn't know already. He wasn't here to learn about our military. He was here to learn about us. Not us personally. No. About us as a species. About humanity. But... I mean... But couldn't X do that anywhere? Go someplace out of the way and carefully observe human interactions? He could have. But he wouldn't have gotten the results he wanted. Why not? Because you don't learn the true nature of humanity by watching people go about their everyday lives. 
You learn it by seeing how they react when put in situations where fear and hatred hold sway. Some people show their best selves in circumstances like that. Most of us don't. We certainly didn't acquit ourselves very well last night. X got prime examples of man at his worst. Bigoted, sadistic, xenophobic, jingoistic. Last night we did our duty. And how many times in history have we seen the most indefensible deeds defended with those very words? Major! I am pointing fingers at myself as much as anyone else. But from X's standpoint, he was quite literally a fella just standing around minding his own business when he was taken prisoner and threatened with torture for... for nothing. Nothing? He's an extraterrestrial! That by itself doesn't make him guilty of anything. But we couldn't very well just let him walk around going wherever he pleased. We might well have been better off doing just that. Why? Because while you and Dr. Hauser were questioning X, I was watching and listening. And what I learned gives me cause for great concern. But he didn't tell us anything. Yes, he did. For all of X's efforts to not reveal anything about himself or his race, he did let something slip. Not through his words, but through the choices he made and the things he didn't say. What did you learn? Well, the fact that he decided to carry out his interrogation in this way would indicate that even though they would seem to be a peaceful, just race, from a behavioral standpoint, they're not that different from us. That's how he knew that the best way to learn about humanity was by putting us under stress. And that means his race, even as evolved as it is, might act in a similar manner if feeling threatened. And that's not all. What's the rest? His unwillingness to give us any information about where he comes from. If his race was truly not afraid of mankind, there would be no reason not to tell us where they live. But he didn't. And all we did was reinforce his fears. So, what happens now? Hmm. An advanced alien race feels threatened by mankind. Threatened enough that they won't even tell us where they're from, even though we're probably a hundred years or more from being able to venture deep into space. If the situation were reversed, what would we do? Hmm? I think you know. Yeah. We can only hope that they're advanced enough to contain their fear and not act on it. Because if they're not... So ends The Interrogator by John C. Alzadek and Dana Perry Hayes. Tonight's story of Suspense. Suspense is produced by Blue Hours Productions and recorded at Melrose Music in Hollywood, California. Tonight's radio drama was written especially for Suspense by John C. Alzadek and Dana Perry Hayes. Jason E. Kelly was Major Elton Dubois. Todd Habercorn was X. Talon Beeson was Colonel Graves. Adrian Wilkinson was Dr. Hauser, and Damon Crawl was Captain Graham. I'm your host, Damon Crawl. Next week at this time, tune in again for another study in Suspense.
Ladies and gentlemen, you are all curious about the future. Of course you are. After all, the future is where each and every one of us will be spending our future lives in the future. But who knows about the future? Only Count Marco knows. And so, I invite you, my friends, to pose your questions to the world's greatest predictionist, Count Marco. You, madam, with the most splendid chapeau. Count Marco, when will we first visit another planet? Count Marco predicts that in 1970, a rocket ship will visit our nearest neighbor, Venus. There, we will find it populated entirely by women. And within 10 years, millions of eligible bachelors from around the globe will have moved to Venus, causing a shortage of men here on Earth. Uh, the gentleman with the handlebar mustache. Will the Yetzel become the top-selling automobile in 1959? Mmm, Count Marco predicts that it will. In fact, Edsel will unveil the very first flying car in 1965, cornering the market for years and driving all other American motor companies overseas to sell their inferior ground-confined wares in Siam and the Belgian Congo. Sir, in the third row... Will Hawaii or Alaska become the next American state? Ah, Count Marco predicts that it will be neither. Rather, it will be our good neighbor to the south, Cuba, with a government amenable to American interests and a vast wealth of sugarcane. Cuba will be an integral part of the United States of America for decades to come. You, madam, in the... Uh, Pantsuit. Count Marco, will television or motion picture be the most popular form of entertainment in this next decade? Count Marco predicts that radio will regain its preeminence in just three years hence. Motion pictures will become so expensive that only millionaires will be able to afford tickets, while television will be revealed to be just a fad. Nothing more than a collection of intellect-deadening drivel designed to appeal to the lowest common denominator. But radio, yes, radio appeals to the imagination of the American populace. The gentleman in the garish striped sport coat. Which horse will win the Kentucky Derby this year? The fastest one. Uh, uh, you, with the exceedingly itchy scalp. Hey, what sort of cockamamie answer is that? Count Marco does not waste his supernatural gifts on such trivialities. If you wish to know that, my couture-challenged friend, I suggest you consult a bookmaker. Oh, wise guy, eh? Why, I ought to come up there and suck you in a jaw. Count Marco predicts that you will be escorted from the world-famous Pacific Grand Theater by two stalwart members of Los Angeles' finest. Hey, 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 get your mitts off of me, lousy coppers. Count Marco predicts that you will all tune in again next week. Until then, dear friends, I bid you farewell and fair predictioning. Of the father of black history, Carter G. Woodson, the second black to garner a PhD from Harvard University, has been attributed with the origination of Negro History Week, initiated in 1926, corresponding with the birthdays of Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln. It was Woodson's belief that the teaching of black history was essential to ensure the physical and intellectual survival of people of African descent, stating, if a race has no history, it has no worth 